To solve this equation, we're actually going to make use of a nifty trick that you've used before, but you may not have thought of in the context of equations. It's called the zero product rule, and what it says is this. It says that any number times zero equals zero. Now that's nice in this instance, because this equation right here doesn't solve easily. We can't just divide both sides by something to find out what x is. We can't factor out an x from both of these at the same time. So what we need to do is factor it into two binomials, in this case x plus 6 times 2x minus 7. And now since we have two binomials that equal 0, and since anything times 0 is 0, we could just make either one of these equal to 0, and then the other one would be equal to 0 because of that, and the statement would be true. So really, there'll be two values for x, whatever value makes this x 0, because then it doesn't matter what this one is, and then whatever value makes this x equal to 0, because then it doesn't matter what this one is. So for instance, if we were to solve this equation right here, this, this expression right here, for 0, x plus 6 equals 0, so x equals negative 6, if we were to plug negative 6 in for x, we'd get negative 6 plus 6 is 0, 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, minus 7 is negative 19, but 0 times negative 19 is 0. So x minus 6 is one solution for this equation. The other one is whatever x needs to be to make this statement equal to 0. So we add 7 to both sides, and we get 2x equals 7. Divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 3 and a half. So now that we know what x is for this side, if we were to plug 3 and a half in for x here, we'd get 0 for this term. This term would be 9 and a half, but it wouldn't matter because 9 and a half times 0 is 0. So for this statement, x equals negative 6 or x equals 3 and a half are the two values that we could plug in for x up here to make the equation true. Here we're going to put that zero product rule to work. We're going to take a look at these three examples and see how it applies to each of them. In this case, we have x minus 9 times 3x plus 4 equals 0. So in order to make x minus 9 0, x minus 9 equals 0, we just have to add 9 to both sides, and we see that x equals 9. So 9 is one solution. The other solution would be 3x plus 4 equals 0. Sorry, equals 0. So we add negative 4 to both sides. 3x equals negative 4. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals negative 4 thirds. So the other solution then is negative 4 thirds. For our second example, one of our solutions is just 0, because here x is by itself, so if it were 0, it would make the whole statement true. So one of our solutions here is that x could be 0. The other solution is what happens when we get 5x minus 4 equal to 0. So we add 4 to both sides, and we get 5x equals 4. Divide both sides by 5, and we get x equals 4 fifths. So the other solution is 4 fifths. Then in our last example, we actually have three solutions. x could be 0, because 4 times 0 would be 0, and then it wouldn't matter what these were. So one solution is 0. The next solution is whatever it takes to make this equal to 0. And we can see that since we're adding 6 to something, and we want it to be 0, x should be negative 6. So that's our second solution. And then in our last one, we have 4x minus 9, and we want that to be 0. So we have 4x minus 9 equals 0. We'll solve it as its own little equation. Add 9 to both sides. 4x equals 9. And divide both sides by 4. x equals 9 fourths. So that's our third solution here, 9 fourths.